From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hi, and welcome to Ropecast. This is Peter Tischer at the microphone. Again, I am without Roger Charlton today, but I'm not alone. I have with me in the studio Mr. Christoph Klein. Hello, Christoph. Hello, Peter. And I want to talk to him about education. You may remember uh, last year we ended off our last Christmas episode with a very famous pop song by Pink Floyd, We Don't Need No Education. But I'm pretty sure Christoph will not agree with that. He's an expert on British education because he just spent a year as an assistant teacher at a school in Great Britain. Where was that, Christoph? I was at a public boarding school in North Yorkshire in Great <clears throat> Britain and was teaching German there. Uh, a boarding school, you may have to explain what a boarding school is. A boarding school is not a normal school where you arrive in the morning on a bus, mm -hmm. but pupils stay there for at least a whole week or maybe even a term, which is three months. Mm -hmm. um, and Overnight. Overnight. They live on campus. Okay, so they have um, what I would call dormitories. Yeah. And that's where they, they have their own rooms. Uh, yeah, they, they mm -hmm. have their own rooms. Yeah. <clears throat> now, you said it was a public boarding school. That comes as a surprise because uh, in Germany, boarding schools are usually uh, privately owned. That's right. And um, mm. funnily enough, it's the same in the UK. It's just that privately owned <clears throat> schools, as opposed to state schools, are called public schools in, in the UK. Kind of a funny term, isn't it? Public. It is, yeah, but maybe they derived it from the fact that state schools are owned by the state, while public schools are owned by the public. By, by the general private, public. By private people, yeah. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, by individuals. Right, so you spent a year there. Can you tell me a little bit more about that school? Well, um, it was located in North Yorkshire, so mm -hmm. close to the east coast of the UK, mm -hmm. in North England. Mm -hmm. So I could travel easily to Scotland or down south towards London. Mm -hmm. um, and I taught German at that school and helped out with routine supervision. And Was this sort of like a high school, um, what Americans would call a high school? So, I don't know, students from the ages of 10 and up? The school actually had a primary school. So pupils started at the age of four or five. Four or five. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they... The primary school encompasses um, years one to, f uh, one to six. And then something comparable to the American high school starts from year seven on. Mm -hmm. um, you have the actual college. College. Yeah. Americans would think that's sort of a university type of thing. Uh, a col but that's not it. That's, it's, a, it's a school it's for school a children. It's a school for secondary education, yeah. Um, what ages are taught then? Um, It starts at uh, an age range of 10 to 11, mm -hmm. um, up to 16, basically, when they acquire the GCSE, which is uh, the General Certificate of Secondary Education in Great Britain. Mm -hmm. Does everybody have to go there? Well, everybody who wants to finish uh, their school with a qualification mm -hmm. will have to, to do the same exam, yeah. That's a final exam? That's a final exam, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and then you could basically you could leave school after that. Yeah, okay. many many do that. Yeah. Uh huh. And you would get you know a, a regular job to, job training, but your school went further than that. Yes, they also have a so-called sixth form college. Uh huh. That's um, basically a two-year course in the UK that prepares uh, the students to go to university. Mm hmm. Okay. And you take um, courses there that are you can specialize in certain areas? It's in, in some ways comparable to our Oberstufe in Germany, Oberstufe. where you um, have Leistungskurse, as it's called. Mm -hmm. So they focus on up to five subjects, I think. Uh -huh. And they do their A-levels. So that's a final exam in these five subjects. Okay, okay. So your school taught from ages four all the way up to age 18-ish. Yeah. That's right. Sort of. And you got into contact with all these age groups? or I was teaching German there, uh, and so I did not teach at the primary school. Mm -hmm. so the, the They don't have any early German. 
No, no, <laughs> unfortunately not. Uh, the, uh, their first language, their first foreign language is French, uh -huh. uh, which starts in year four mm -hmm. and is intensified in year six before they go over to the college. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, what were the youngest students that you taught? That was year eight, I think, yeah. They are about 13 or 14. Ah, you know what? I spent uh, seventh and eighth grade in, in, in a U.S. school, in a junior high school. Uh, maybe we ought to talk about the way that uh, schools in Great Britain and the U.S. compare in the next podcast. Yeah, that would be nice. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So let's just say goodbye for today. And next time we'll be talking about a typical school day in a British boarding school and an American junior high school. Goodbye. Goodbye, listeners. You've been listening to Ropecast. Brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.